Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to continue to work on the classic Mini. When I got this Mini we did an inspection all around the car and we identified that there was an oil leak or a grease leak around the gators of the drive shafts on the left and on the right. That's also why the Mini failed its MOT. Now I already took the drive shaft out of the vehicle and there is another video showing you on how to take it out. But now we're going to look on this drive shaft on how we can recondition it. And this is the actual drive shaft that fits into the classic mini. But be aware there are several types. This is what we call the pot type. And the reason we call it the pot type is because at the end we got this pot that fits into the differential. I already have cut off the gators so we can actually have a better view on what's inside and what we're going to do with it. So let me remove those because those we would replace anyway if you're going to recondition the drive shaft. Now I am not going to recondition mine for obvious reasons and you see it why. So I ordered a brand new drive shaft because too many parts have to be replaced and the total cost for all the individual parts. So the pot itself that goes into the differential the uh, CV joint and CV stands for continuous velocity that sits at the inboard side would have to be replaced and also would have to replace the CV joint on the outboard and you know all that together is going to cost me more than just getting a brand new drive shaft and on top of that I would have to change the spindle because some of those splines are worn out and you'll see that. But now let's assume that is not the case and that you actually want to rework your own drive shaft because it has a limited issue. Now first of all the drive shaft itself uh, as you can see it can move in any kind of directions with the car so if your suspension is going up and down you're going to get continuous uh, torque on your wheels no matter under what angle that drive shaft would be and that's because of those uh, continuous velocity uh, joints or CVs as we call them. Uh, the outer part comes as one piece and the inner part uh, comes as one piece as well so if you're going to recondition your drive shaft check it out and see if you really have a good movement. If it's a bit sturdy and hard then you know then it's time to replace it and in my case that is the case because that one is actually was actually leaking. So in your case it may be enough to replace just the gators and repack these CVs with proper grease and you should be good to go. So let's go ahead and disassemble the inner CV joint so let us have a closer look at the inner CV joint. Uh, as I said before, this is the pot that fits into the differential and you can just slide that off. And if you remove the drive shaft from the engine, make sure that this stays inside the differential and you can always prime it out afterwards with a big screwdriver because you can't get this through the hole in the subframe. That's weird, but that's the way it is. So let me remove this and then we can have a closer look at the inner CV uh, joint itself. And this is what it is. Nothing really special. A couple of big um, metal balls that are rotating inside a, a, a track and then a race that holds it into place. So we need to take this apart. Now to do that, the first thing we're going to do is to remove these little metal balls here and have a little inspection on them. Now to remove these balls, all you need is a screwdriver and you poke it underneath and then push it and then the ball comes out just like that. And once all the steel balls are removed, you can actually rotate it and slide this back. But keep in mind that if you're going to put it back, that the long sleeve or the long side here is facing towards the drive shaft and the very short slanted side is facing the outside part, right? So it should never be able to get off like this. So let's move it back and the next thing we need to do is to remove the front part here so we can take everything off and replace it with a new inner CV uh, joint. To remove this part you need to hammer it off with kind of a chisel but don't knock on this side on the star form. Knock on the edge right here and then it will slide off because inside you have splines and there is a a locking ring that holds it in place but if you knock it gently off it will slide off eventually so I'm going to do this with this chisel and then try to knock it off. Of course I have this fixed in a vise 
uh, and I don't care really much about damage to the shaft itself because I'm not going to reuse it. But in your case, you might want to protect the shaft in your vise. See, it's going off. It doesn't take a lot of effort to do that. And here it is. And that's where you have this kind of circlip that holds it in place. Now, if you're going to renew this part, you might as well change the circlip at the same time. So with the inner CV removed, we can actually inspect the spline on the shaft. And the spline still looks all right on in this case. Nevertheless, um, I think the outer side is worse. Oh. So now that we have removed the inner CV joint, we can remove the cage for the steel balls and then we can inspect the steel balls themselves. They should have no scratches or rust on them. So let's have a closer look on these. If they do, then you need to replace it. If you look on the roller balls that are inside the CV, you can see that this one is having a very pitted area. There's actually almost like a deep scratch and some rust in it. And that certainly is no good. Uh, the same thing is true for the spline. If the spline is damaged or rusty, replace the shaft itself. And of course, uh, the pot needs to be inspected as well, where the balls are actually rotating in, if that is still all, all right or not. And then you might have to change the pot as well. So now it's time to take the outer CV joint off the drive shaft. And this whole unit is one unit, so you can't replace parts inside, you have to buy the whole unit. And it's very similar uh, of what we've done with the inner CV joint. You just need to knock it off, but this time I'm not going to use a chisel because you don't want to knock on the ring which is there, and I'll show you that in a second. Try to knock on the star form. That's going to be better to knock it off, and it's going to take a bit of knocking to get that off because it also has that circlip inside to hold things in place. And by the way, guys, that's a very easy tool to keep these balls in place with a magnet. So, here you see that ring. Now, don't knock on that ring. That's part of the drive shaft. It prevents the outer CV sliding backwards. Don't knock on that. But you need to knock on the star four metal here. Knock on that, and then you can knock it off. Now, remember, there's nothing to be changed on this. This is a complete unit exchange. And for that, I'm going to be using another chisel and try to knock it off. So that's coming off. Not yet. It's really going to fall on the ground if I'm not careful. And it did fall on the ground, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to get rid of mine. But if you do yours, make sure you catch it if you want to reuse it. Now, you can actually see that ring I was referring to. This is that ring. So that's the one you should not be knocking on. Um, if you're going to change the drive shaft, remember that the side with the short splines are the outer CV. And the side with the long splines, that's the inner CV. And here is that ring or that circlip on the outer CV. Uh, which is holding it actually in place. So that's why you need to knock it. You need to overcome this, um, yeah, circlip, I would say. So when you knock it, it's pushing together and it slides over. So now, guys, so now we have everything disassembled on the drive shaft. We got the shaft itself. We've got the outer CV. We got the outer boot. We've got the inner CV, which is this part together with the cage and the steel balls, the roller balls, and we have the pot that fits into the differential. Now, it all depends uh, on your specific uh, drive shaft, what you need to replace. Uh, maybe you only need to replace the gators or the covers. Maybe you just need to replace the inner uh, CV or the outer CV. But I'm going to replace everything, as I said before, because I have wear and tear on the inner CV, for sure, because that's where I had the oil leak. And the outer CV doesn't rotate all that nice. But anyway, now you've seen on how we took it apart. 
Now the next step we're going to do is assuming now that you have all new parts for that, right? And now once you get it, you have to pack all these joints, CV joints, with special grease. It's typically a sack or a pocket that comes with it and you really need to pack that up very well. So let's start to reassemble all these parts. So we're going to start reassembling the outer CV. So now, of course, you would be having your new CV coming in. You pack the whole part inside with grease, the grease that comes with the CV joint, or if it doesn't come with, get special CV joint grease. And then uh, just put it up and make sure that the splines do fit. See, you have to make sure about that so that you don't um, cross thread it and you can't knock it on very far because that circlip is there so just make sure that that feels right and then just knock it on there we go and that's on a little bit more and now it's flush against this big stand up here uh, that prevents the outer CV moving backwards onto the shaft and that's about it make sure it's flush and and tight and that's about it that's all what you need to do and then you can already start feeling it how it moves and this moves a bit i don't know bad i think it's in, it's jerky but that's normal because that's the old one if you had a new one that would just roll very smoothly if you're going to hammer the outer CV on it, you hammer it on the front here. Don't hammer on the edges because you're going to damage the thread. Maybe you want to use some protection on it, that's up to you. But normally with a couple of hits it just works fine and you might probably even want to use a soft hammer for that. Uh, that's all up to you. Here I don't care too much because this is an old one which I'm going to throw away anyway. So we've done the outer CV, but still we still have to put the gator up. And remember, do it now because you can't do it once it's in the car, right? So we would slide the new gator on it and then tie it down with metal strips or tie wraps depending what it comes with and that side is done. So now we're going to do this side. Now for this side, um, we're going to put up a new inner CV which is basically this race, the balls that go with it and I have them over here and I'll put them in and then the holder for that will go on here and then we just need to knock it together. But don't forget to put first of all up the inner CV gator because if you don't, you can't fit it anymore. So do that. So let's put a device and then we put it up. There we go. So again, in this case, make sure that you put the race or the holder for the metal balls in the proper way. And the short slanted edge is facing outwards. The long one is facing inside the shaft. So slide that on there like so, and you should be okay. Next is to install the uh, holder for the balls, and that's gonna be new. And make sure the splines fit nicely and then gently knock that into place. If you put this up, make sure you have some grease on this and obviously you wanna make sure that the splines fit, right? I'm just gonna put a bit of grease up so it slides on easier. Uh, now in your case, you probably will have all fresh grease and you also have a new washer there or a circlip to hold that. Now put that up and make sure that the splines match up and then just hammer it in. There we go, that's all it takes. You don't need to hammer very hard. Knock it all the way to the end. And now you can move that on. And this should not be able to get off. If it gets off, then you have mounted it the wrong way. And now all I need to do is actually install the balls, right? And I'm done. All right, so let's install these steel balls. And that's just putting them in there and Squeeze them in. That's all you need to do. It's a bit of squeezing sometimes, but it's not that hard. There we go. And these, of course, would be brand new steel balls, not old ones like the ones I have here. Put 
One more. Or actually, two more. There we go. And that's all sorted out. And of course, all this will be packed with grease. And then you can slide the pot on it. And the pot is the part that goes onto it, uh, which is going into the differential. But you should not be mounting this together because you can't fit the pot through the hole in the subframe. So you can only do this uh, in a different way. So you have to put the pot back into the differential, then slide in the drive shaft through the hole in the subframe and then install the gator. So the, the gator would be here, right? Would be hanging here. So this is how you would feed it through the hole in the subframe and then it would meet the pot which is on the differential and then actually you can put the gator up with some tie wraps or whatever uh, mechanism that you would come with it. And you don't need to believe me about this pot but I'm going to show you. So this is the pot that goes into the differential and here you have the hole in the subframe and this is where the drive shaft is going through and you see uh, this doesn't go through the hole so if you install the gator and everything on the drive shaft together uh, connected to this pot you have to disconnect everything all over again and then move it in so the idea is that first of all you move the pot into the differential from the back and then you slide in the drive shaft and then you connect the gator so folks, we are nearing the end of this video and this was a very easy job to do. Taking it out of the vehicle is easy as well and I'm going to show you that in another video. But really reconditioning your drive shaft is a piece of cake. It doesn't take a lot. You need a hammer and a chisel and that's it. You're going to get a lot of dirty hands because it's going to be really greasy so you want to degrease everything before you start. But that's it. Um, how many parts you need to replace? That depends on the damage on your drive shaft. You need to check it. You need to check the CVs if they are rotating quite freely or not. Check the joints and also check all the splines. And if all that is okay, then you don't need to do anything. But if anything is bad on that, then replace that part accordingly. Now, a brand new shaft is probably going to run you about, I don't know, I think it's around 200 pounds. Uh, it's quite expensive, but if you buy all the parts separate, and then you put it together yourself, it's going to cost you even more. Now that's why I have gone for a brand new shaft, which I don't have yet. I'm still awaiting it. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I'll see you back in my next video. Bye-bye.